Hello again folks, this is just a quick update to my previous video where I hardwired in an ESP8266 into the back of this 64x32 LED matrix display. Now shortly after uploading that video I had a number of comments and concerns from both uh, viewers and subscribers to my channel as well as fellow electronics YouTubers and I thought I'd address those concerns and comments in this video and talk about how I'd approach this project differently if I were to do it again in the future. So before we go any further we'll take a look at what we actually did. So we stuck the ESP8266 into the back, in this case it was a D1 Mini, and simply hardwired it to the onboard connectors using Kynar wire. Now in its current configuration as a YouTube subscriber counter, using Brian Locke's excellent uh, YouTube subscriber code, um, the panel and the D1 Mini combined has a current draw of between 600 and 650 milliamps. And it's, you know, reasonably acceptable to, to power it via the USB socket on board the D1 Mini. That means that the, the power's coming into the D1 Mini and the LEDs are drawing the power via this Kynar wire, uh, you know, to the actual onboard power connector. I will say that the D1 Mini does get quite hot. Um, not so hot that you can't hold your finger against it, but probably hotter than you would want it to be. Not dangerously hot, but it is warm. The problem arises when you start to use this panel in a different configuration, using more of the LEDs or having more white on the, the display. Worst case scenario, if we were to have every LED on here, um, RGB, all turned on thus given as a white panel the current draw is going to be significant now various uh, panels there's, sorry there's various panels of this type available and having done a bit of looking online and digging around you know the the quoted you know maximum current draw does vary sometimes it's as low as two amps sometimes it's as high as eight amps depending on where you look in the panel type like i say um but clearly, even as a minimum, two amps or two and a half amps or four amps, whatever it may be, that is far too much for this Kynar to handle. It's very difficult to get an accurate specification on Kynar, and because so much of it is produced in China and you know it's it's extremely common, the the specification may vary. Again, having looked around. You, you sometimes quoted as little as 100 milliamps, uh, sometimes as much as an amp, amp and a half, two amp, three amp. Um, there is no real way to ascertain what kind you have and what the actual maximum rating is without doing some dubious testing. But ultimately, if you were to attempt to drive a panel at full tilt, as I like to call it, um, you, you know, a significantly higher current uh, draw, it is going to be potentially dangerous um it, you know th there's no two ways about it it could be dangerous you could be talking this bursting into flames and the last thing i want is to have passed on information to you guys and girls uh, that is potentially going to cause you harm or loss of property all that good stuff so the key point here is um, regardless of what configuration you've got it in at all is use the onboard power connector Okay, that means that the LEDs have been driven directly, you know, from a suitable power supply. And the D1 Mini, in this instance, is almost parasitic because it's got, you know, 100, 200 milliamps current draw. And that's probably going to be acceptable from this, uh, you know, thin Kynar. So the, the, the LEDs are driven directly and the D1 Mini, just sitting on the back here, is drawing the power that it requires from these uh, bits of Kynar and, you know, all it's outputting is the signal to actually drive the LEDs and turn on the LEDs using that onboard power. Another concern that wasn't raised but I've subsequently thought about is, you know, if you do have it in this configuration and you decide to reprogram the, the D1 Mini, if you plug this into your laptop or computer power supply, sorry, not power supply, uh, laptop or computer's USB ports, you know, again, on in this configuration, you could probably get away with it uh, on a USB 3 port. USB 3 uh, specification states that it has to have a minimum of 900 milliamps. But if you've got a bog standard USB 2 port, that's 500 milliamps uh, minimum. 
If you've got this again been driven at full tilt or you've programmed it to be driven at full tilt and you you know plug it in to program it, as soon as it turns on, there's a potential that you're gonna cause damage to your, your computer. Yeah, the, the, the port is simply not designed to supply, you know, potentially two and a half, three amps, whatever it may be. You you're just gonna blow up your, your laptop, you know, cause damage to the ports and you know, is it really worth it for, you know, a couple of quid to uh, uh, D1 Mini or you know an 18 quid panel, absolutely not. Um, but that's you know that that was the sort of safety concerns. You know, I'll just reiterate: use the onboard power connector. Um, it's just the the safest way to do it. If you want to hardwire it um, and program it whilst it's in situ, have some means of disconnecting the five volt rail from the onboard connector. Um, you know, basically. Uh, maybe put a switch in it or something like that or a little jumper or a little inline connect that you can simply disconnect you can program it once it's programmed you disconnect the USB you connect it together or slide the switch to power mode and then apply power to that uh, thus you know mitigating any potential damage to your computer um, you, you know that's I think is the safest way to do it the other point that was uh, raised was the the messiness of the wiring and um, people suggesting that I could have used uh, ribbon cables and of course you know if you're connecting these together by all means use your little nice uh, ribbon cable that comes supplied however um, it's not feasible to use ribbon cable to connect up uh, the D1 Mini to the onboard connectors there's wires from this side going all the way around here um, you probably could use a bit of ribbon cable there but all the other connections sort of cross over and you know go to various sides, you know both the sides, and and not a very organised manner. So using ribbon cable, it would be extremely difficult to to manage. Um, so you know that's the reason I went for Kynar. Um, ultimately, if you're going to use it like this, um, use non on onboard power connector, of course. Um, it's going to be hidden. You you're going to mount this on an enclosure or in an, in an enclosure or whatever you're going to do the wiring is not going to be seen that there's not any major current carrying on these kind of if a wire comes off you know so be it it's not going to damage or potentially it could damage but realistically it's it's not really going to cause any damage it's just going to stop working so yeah it may be messy but it's going to be hidden regardless so there we have it that was uh just the the points i wanted to address um, I, I, I would again reiterate, if you're going to use it in this configuration, power it from the onboard power connector and if you're uh, intending programming it in the future, then of course you must disconnect the 5 volt line from the D1 Mini when plugging it into your computer. Otherwise, when the display comes on, there's a potential that there's going to be quite a high uh, current draw which could cause your computer or laptop significant damage of which I won't be held liable for because I've now told you about it. <laughs> we'll just plug it in uh, before we go and I'll quickly show you something else that's just come through the post the other day. It is the big brother. This is a P3 panel. This is a, has a three millimeter pitch. So in between each uh, LED there's three millimeters. And I got this one the other day. This is the P5 panel, and as you can see, hopefully, if I just zoom out slightly, it is significantly larger. So, um, yeah, we'll have a play about with that in a future video. Maybe uh, just do the same, just to see what the comparison's like and, and what sort of display we get. Um, but yeah, available from, from Amazon, if I just open it up. This was about eight pounds more expensive than this i think this was about 18 or 19 pounds uh, this larger panel is i think 26 pounds uh, of course the link to it will be in the description below nice thing about this panel however if i just turn over the onboard connectors um, are mirrored so we've got onboard connectors and then we've got these vacant pads here and i have probed these out and you know they correspond and are you know there is continuity between each pad and each pin on each connector 
so both sides which means if you did want to um, you know do something similar like this it's going to be nice and easy to stick it in one of these big you know sort of blank areas and tack straight onto these pads it's going to be nice and easy uh, super simple and you probably uh, going back to the messiness of this one it's probably going to be a lot easier to to make it neat and tidy uh, because there's plenty of space to to root it just uh, one other point sorry um clearly this is this is quite uh, cumbersome it, it sticks out significantly from the back of the panel um, you could, of course, solder directly onto the, the connectors on the board. Probably easier if I show you on this one. You know, you could solder directly onto these uh, pads in, uh, here and then just use a simple DC barrel jack, something like that to power it. That's going to be much more low profile and you will be able to sort of keep it within the, the frame of the, the panel itself. You may need to cut a, or drill a small hole just to, to root your wire in. But um, yeah, there is potential to make it nice and neat and tidy as well as safe. So thank you very much for watching and uh, you know, listening to me rambling on. Hopefully that goes some way to address the, the concerns you might have. And you know, hopefully I've, I've explained how to make it uh, much more safer than I did in my previous video. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, helpful or if it prevented you from burning your house down, please give me the thumbs up. If you thought uh, it was rubbish and actually my house is already burnt down, uh, give me the thumbs down. Thanks very much for watching. As always, take care of yourselves and all the best.